Yeah. Well, before we start, anyway, let's do a cheers, cheers. chocolate cheers. Chin chin. Chin chin. <laughs> chin, chin. <laughs> Welcome everyone to Wisdom Blogs. My name's Lisa Collins and this week I'm joined by a very special guest, my friend Pablo Spool, who is a multi-award winning chocolate maker. And I met Pablo probably about 10 years ago now on a master chocolatier course. Pablo left being a master chocolatier and chocolate maker and I left being a master chocolate eater <laughs> of his delightful <laughs> chocolates. So today we're going to talk about the wisdom of chocolate and I felt that you were the best person to speak about this. So I'm curious about how you got into this and what's the wisdom that you'd like to share about chocolate? Ah, well, okay. Hi, Lisa. Thanks for having me. Let's get the pleasantries out of the way. Um, so, yeah, briefly, I'll bullet point my, uh, my entry into the chocolate world. Um, it all started at a party about 20 odd years ago now, probably. Um, a friend of mine was, was having a birthday. I was going down there to DJ, as I had been doing for the, for the previous sort of 20 years as well. Um, and, so, and there was some some raw cacao going around the party a friend of mine said you've got to try this and it, it basically looked like a slab of wood or cardboard <laughs> and didn't taste much different either it was pretty pretty rank but the effects were were amazing it was like whoa this is this is this is chocolate but it's something special it's different um and that kept us up kept us up all night kept the party going and the following day we were just on a totally different level and it was like it was like the gateway the gateway to a whole new way of being because mm. from that you know it, it was raw chocolate so if, if you can make chocolate raw what else can you do and that opened the path to to looking into um detoxing and raw food in general you know raw veganism and, and uh, it, it was just the um the, the beginning of of a whole sort of um health health kick and a, and a new way of life mm. for us um, and uh, then not long after that sort of uh, epiphany and uh, awakening, um, I was at another party, I used to do quite a lot of parties back in those days. <laughs> <Mine's> like... <laughs> <laughs> Thursday, Friday, Saturday, yeah. Sunday. Yeah, it's sleep Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and do it all over again. Uh, but um, yeah, so another, another party, a friend of mine, uh, Dilwyn Jenkins, who is sadly no longer with us. Um, he died out in Peru a few years ago. Oh, um, was he from he, Wales he, by any chance? Oh, with that name, Dylan Jenkins, yes, indeed. He's a, what a da. He's a, oh, oh Diane. <laughs> so he's, I mean... Oh, we're both he, in he, Wales, by the, by the way. If anyone watching, oh, yeah. we are both in Wales. So <laughs> we're allowed. We're, we're, allowed. <laughs> we're not culturally misappropriating no, the Welsh not language. At all. Or, 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 or uh, demeaning the accent in any Absolutely. way. Absolutely. <laughs> we have full hiraith for our roots. Absolutely. <laughs> so, yeah, so, um, so Dylan had been... He travelled out to Peru as a young anthropologist back in the sort of late seventies, early eighties, um, and he'd uh, he just he he just found this uh, community of people, the Ashen Inca people, um, and literally, I think he was one of the first uh, gringos, as they call them, first white person they'd they'd, they'd seen, mm. um, and they took him in as one of their own, and he lived with them for I think almost a year, and then came back to Mid Wales. Um, and wrote a little journal about it that then b went on to become one of the first the first rough guide book it was the rough guide to Peru one of his friends wow. was, was uni mates was a publisher said oh I'll publish mm. a story for you um, anyway I digress a, a, away from the, the cacao but basically he'd uh, been working with the Ashinika communities um, and bringing coffee out of the jungle as a way to sort of give them an income he'd mm. come, bring some beans back to mid Wales sell them in the local health food shop um, and then travel backwards and forwards updating his book bringing more beans sometimes um, some handicrafts and fabrics and jewelry and I just happened to mention to him one night in passing oh your mates in Peru do they grow cacao and he's like oh yeah yeah chocolate it grows grows all around their villages but they don't do anything with it they just sell it to river traders uh swap wow. it for tools and it's really it's not you know they don't know that it makes chocolate it's not really valued as a as a commodity um or even a resource it's just it was just another fruit to them yeah. you know mm. i was like wow this is amazing please you know can you bring next time you go bring back a bag of beans mm. um and he did and uh obviously 
I had we hadn't I hadn't been I hadn't met you I hadn't been on that course <laughs> I'd literally had this bag of beans and a pestle and mortar and started bashing it up and making this really coarse paste mm. that, that didn't taste very nice but it had the effects that we were looking for and it was like yes this is the stuff this is the real deal thank you very much um next time you go try and find out you know let's let's see if we can establish a supply chain with with the with the community and 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 set something up mm. um so yeah that 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 was that was the gateway to that really um but it took a long time to to establish obviously back back then i think we had skype we had the internet <laughs> but um, a message would go through to to, to dilwyn and then he'd have to go into the jungle which would take quite a long time to get there and get the message across and, and then bring back the message to me and and initially we were like we'll buy all your beans we'll buy all your beans and then we thought actually that's that's rather that's cut that's a bit white centric it's a little bit cultural misappropriation we didn't mm. even ask the community if they wanted to sell their beans to us so that yeah. was that was like a realization so hold on we're just storming in there in a, in a sort of in a really like we like like historically we've always done which is really quite bad so mm. let's ask the community if they want to yeah. establish a you know a, a, some, some commerce with us um and luckily they did and they saw the the value in it all and and yeah now there is a lovely connection Dilwyn was like family and um and we get to to enjoy these wonderful beans which we're uh, enjoying now cheers <laughs> yucky da <laughs> <laughs> absolutely and i know that um so so you established forever cacao was that about 10 years ago that you then set up yeah 20 2012 yeah, 2012, I, I sort of set it up and then I entered um, one of those food awards, the Great Taste Awards. Nice. Um, and, and, but that was before I even had Forever Cacao as a name. I, yes. I literally just made a few bars of chocolate on my kitchen table, sent it into this award, got the award. It's like, oh, wow, there might be, there might be something in this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, yeah. And do you want to talk a little bit about the raw side of it as well? Because, um, you know, growing up, and I'm sure you'd be the same, you know, I didn't know anything about raw chocolate. I thought raw chocolate, I thought chocolate was dairy milk and that was it. And it's only when you, you discover raw cacao, not coca, and the fact that it doesn't have all of those bad things in it, to me, that really opened up my mind. And I now see it as a, as a multivitamin that I take every single day, maybe multiple times a day. <laughs> yeah yeah um again i think it, it's it's um it's the minimal processing it's trying to keep everything as close to its natural habitat as possible mm. um there's something like 300 active compounds in cacao yeah. um when it's processed into cocoa and and heavily roasted and then squashed and ground and all that intense sort of industrial side of um, chocolate making that goes on in massive factories with all those huge companies mm. that just diminishes um, the benefits and, and all the magic that's inherent in the bean. Um, mm. Literally when it's raw uh, uh, and on the tree, it is a tropical fruit. You, you crack open this big colorful pod and inside is this, uh, this, this bean that's covered in this sort of white mucilage, they call it. It's like a, like a jelly really. Mm. tastes quite like a lychee or a mango or a passion fruit it's got real tropical vibes to it nothing like chocolate at all right. which is i suppose why the ashaninka thought what, what are you talking about chocolate this is a this is a fruit <laughs> yeah yeah um and um and it's only then when it's fermented um and dried um and that the uh, the actual the chocolate that we are familiar with and those flavors come out mm. if it wasn't for the fermentation it would literally just taste again a little bit like wood or cardboard um, yeah. it, it has to have that fermentation not only brings out the flavor but also activates all the compounds and um yeah and brings out the magic yeah one of the highest sources of magnesium um yes. antioxidants um theobromine i mean like you say coffee uh, with the caffeine theobromine a very close relation to, to caffeine i think there's one little spike different on the on the molecule mm. um but it has a totally different effect with the theobromine you have a longer attack, a much longer sort of sustain, and a slower release. So mm. instead of that coffee spike, oh, I'm, I'm vibing, I'm coffeeing, boof, I've hit the ground, I need another one. Yeah. The cacao will, will sustain you well, you know, all the way through to lunchtime, another one in the afternoon, all the way through yeah. to the evening. I had an email from a guy yesterday who was really, um, really uh, 
full of the joys of how his um, coffee replacement and how he's he's switched up cacao for for, for his coffee um, and also uh, medicinal mushrooms, little mm. micro doses of Ooh, reishi, corn syrup, so you know all the um, all the magic ones. <laughs> yeah, um, have basically kept him on a level, and he says you know it's he's um, it's it's uh, it's really helped him so I'm sorry. Mm. and getting feedback like that from people is is what keeps me going yeah. <laughs> so so what's in your chocolate today then let's discuss what we've both got in our in our delicious mugs today is a very simple um cacao a little bit of coconut sugar uh, and water and hot water that's it not boiled i just yeah. take mine up to like 80 90 degrees at the most nice um, there's about 25 grams of cacao in here mm. um and about 10 grams of sugar uh, obviously, if you want to go for a full, like deep dive, uh, a ceremonial mm. dose, they recommend that um, uh, uh, the serving should be around forty to forty-two grams. But personally, I think that you know, you know, when you've had forty grams of cacao, <laughs> it's, it's a little bit much, <laughs> and and your body will tell you, you know, you're, yes. you know when you've had enough. It's 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 very intuitive like that, and it's very adaptogenic. So yeah. cacao. Will, tends to give you what you need, which is not necessarily what you want. I mean, sometimes, sometimes you might, yeah. Um, we used to put on this, uh, when, about a year ago, when we were all allowed to go out and have parties together. Like humans. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> as we were designed to do. Yeah. <laughs> um, C Cacao Club, our little monthly event, we'd have up to 100 people, we'd sit in a circle, we'd have a drink of cacao, and then I'd bang the tunes on for two hours, we'd have a proper rave up, and then, uh, and then sound healing at the end, you know, crystal mm. bowls or a gong bath or something, and then everyone would float out the door at like half past ten in the evening, and, mm. and uh, we'd, we'd felt like we'd had a real purge cleanse energized people used to get different things out of it you know some people would go oh, i was up all night after that and other people would go oh i went home and slept like a log so yes it, it's, it, it's really it depends on where you are where and, and what you need it's, it's absolutely beautiful. yeah mm. yeah well i've got some of your ceremonial cacao in here today a tablespoon and um i've got some coconut milk and some almond milk and then some hot water but what's really interesting because i know that um in with the processing of normal chocolate they'll add dairy they'll add sugar and obviously raw cacao doesn't have that your chocolate doesn't have any sugar in it um everyone by the way you should try pablo's chocolate because it is absolutely amazing i'm always recommending your chocolate um and uh and for a long time i would always add the coconut sugar because i know that's a bit better for your body but recently, um, somebody said to me, oh, I don't add sugar at all. It takes away the taste of the chocolate. And I thought, I haven't really tried too much chocolate without the coconut sugar. And I have mm -hmm. to say, since I've taken the coconut sugar out, you really can. I mean, I'm not a coffee drinker, so I've never had that coffee hit. Um, but you really can taste the chocolate. And I guess it says my palate has changed. And I'm really enjoying that at the moment. And another thing I wanted to say about it being ad uh, adaptogenic is that Absolutely, you're right. You're like some people can't drink it at night. Sometimes I can drink it in the evening, and because it's full of magnesium and the sulfur, I will get a really good night's sleep. But you're right; it's so intuitive to your body. And mm. I always feel that, you know, whenever I chat to my friends and I talk to them about my chocolate addiction, you know, we'll kind of, you know, say it in a, in a, in a, in a joking kind of way, and I'll say it's a multivitamin. It's not, you know, it's not really an addiction. Um, it really is about. I just see the blessing of the chocolate and what it's nourishing my body with. Um, and, and I think, you know, I used to add for a little while reishi mushroom in with the chocolate and that was delicious as well. But then there came a time that I, my body didn't need that. Like now I'm adding maca to it. So, mm -hmm. and that feels like a really nice combination, but I guess as well, mm -hmm. my journey with cacao has literally been just that following what I'm, I'm intuitively drawn to. Um, and just yeah enjoying it every single day so thank you because you are my main chocolate supplier um so we all but we all benefit from your chocolate um, well thank you <laughs> yeah so can you talk a little bit about the spiritual side because i know you know quite a few years ago we all went to peru as a group and um we were lucky enough to meet some shamans out there and i remember going into a, a cacao shop and having some cacao tea and and shelly a, a mutual friend of ours shelly and i we literally floated out of the shop just giggling it was just I'd never, never come across anything like it. It was so intense. Um, 
but yeah talk to us about the spiritual side of it and what that's brought out in you okay well i mean i suppose on a physical level um, it's a vasodilator, so it opens the blood vessels of the heart and it, and it increases blood flow. So, ergo, on a metaphysical level, it brings you into that heart space and makes you a little bit more heart-centred if you pay attention. And that's the other brilliant thing about the, these, you know, the most simple thing, a cup of warm cacao. Actually, drunk in a mindful setting giving yourself the time and the space to actually prepare it and sit with it and connect with it and actually go into that heart mm. space that's that's just the perfect conduit for mm. a for a, a stronger connection so however you know people everyone has their own way of their different way of um, you know connecting to the universe grounding yourself um the fact that you can use a, a thing as simple as a cup of cacao to to support that sort of um that act that 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 system is brilliant and beautiful and it's it's undeniable you know you, you can totally feel your heart opening and it, it it's hard to describe that to someone you say to someone oh get in your heart space it's like, well how do i do that like, well yeah. you know just put, put put your awareness into into, into that space and adding some cacao into that into that equation really helps people it's like oh actually you can you can follow it down your throat you can actually taste it and you can spend time you can close your eyes you can go within you can deepen your connection mm. to yourself and that's really what what i see it as it, it you know it brings you home to you mm. that's it's that's it's it's a hug and a mug the gift that keeps on giving i can roll out a load of cliches <laughs> <laughs> i love that a hug in a mug <laughs> absolutely <laughs> but you know it is and again it's a plant medicine so you know yeah. some people chase off to the to the rainforest of peru to do bang loads of ayahuasca and 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 meet the the, the serpents and and have a deep psychedelic experience but you know um you can do the same at home with a cup of cacao um, yeah. and and a avoid the purging and uh, yeah. <laughs> the, yeah, yeah. the insects <laughs> the <lack of laughs> <Exactly. oxygen. laughs> I'm not you know I'm not dissing that road everyone's on their own yes. journey and, and that's the beautiful thing about our experience as uh, as beings and sharing this 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 you know collective consciousness and, mm. and and how we're all having our own experience but also sharing and um and exchanging notes and and you know how, well how was it for you did you did you mm. you know what, what tool have you discovered now we're we're constantly evolving and learning and hopefully you know um yeah the plants are definitely teachers and yes. depending on yeah how 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 willing you are to listen that's really it i think yeah. and, and and yeah chocolate's been corrupted for so many years hundreds of years into being this guilty pleasure and full of sugar and full of dairy and all like you say just 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 something that's seen as very wrong a treat whereas in its yeah. natural pure form it, it's it's a nourishing whole food full of full of vitamins minerals you know absolutely beautiful but intention sorry lisa just to yeah. hit on the spiritual side of things intention is everything when it comes mm -hmm. to um when it comes to connecting with your cacao i think you know it could be as simple as oh, i'm just going to drink this and it's going to make me feel nice and then i'm going to get on with my day or i need a little energy lift or it could be a really deep profound moment mm. where you know you could ask for guidance for the next 24 hours guidance for the next 20 years and mm. boom it will come in probably sometimes when you least expect it you know at the at the post office or the petrol yes. pump <laughs> yeah. like, oh there's a revelation <laughs> so yeah our benefits are just yeah, amazing <laughs> it, and it does feel like there's a message coming from the plant doesn't it you can you can feel that and i wonder how how you know over the years it just slowly chips away and i wonder as well in those early days where the chocolate has been corrupted um because I remember David Wolf talking about this once, you know, we were all brought up in that chocolate full of sugar. He said, but there was obviously something in it, very minute traces of magnesium and sulfur. So we knew instinctively there was something good in it. Um, so it's interesting is that there's just a human, you know, there's something good in it that your body wants because obviously the soil that we've got now is very depleted in all those micronutrients. So your body's searching for something, but it's just got a load of other rubbish stuff in it 
as well that kind of corrupts the body. But it almost feels like there's that little message even in the other chocolate that was trying to get through. I mean, I don't know if it's still like that now because I think it's probably got even more corrupt than what it was like when we were growing up. But um, it, it is interesting how it has been turned from this sacred medicine and what I call as, you know, as a nutritionist, it's a really good medicine for the body and nutrition for the body into that guilty pleasure, isn't it? It's really interesting how that's been twisted. And I do feel there mm. is a there is a revival. And if you think about what we've seen in the last 10 years of, of cacao and raw cacao, and I love it when I go out and just see so many different brands now on the shelves of all the different raw chocolates. Uh, so I, I'm, that really inspires me to know that more and more people are getting the message and getting out there and, uh, and experiencing it. And I think just discovering so many different ways that you can have chocolate, different flavors without the sugar, you know, adding like mm. lacuma in it. I know you add some amazing medicinal flower um, medicine. Sorry, that's my son just coming in. <laughs> I'm mine. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm just coming too. <laughs> I'm still, I'm still, still with it. Won't be long, won't be long. He wants to get back on his Xbox. Yeah. <laughs> what what is the chances of that? I um, know. Coming in at the same time. It won't be long, won't be long. I'll give you a shout, okay? Oh, okay. <laughs> on that note then, we, we can wrap up. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, um, I did, I made a couple of little notes. Um, mood elevating serotonin and nandamide yeah. nourishing increased creativity clarity focus soothing heart opening um physical flexibility some people drink cacao and then go do loads of yoga or you know static dance um and of course to release emotional stuff blockages and um any of that any of that shit that we just need to shit yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and I totally yeah, agree with all that. That's brilliant. So, in terms of your um, your cacao club and your and the dance that went with that, are you doing that online now? What's happening now? We've obviously in lockdown. Yeah, well, we did one. We did one online one. Um, that, that was like July uh, last year, <laughs> which yeah. was great. Um, it's nice to have that interaction. But the plat, it's difficult to find a a, a platform where you can still have that connection. Um, and the audio quality is good enough to 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 have the you know the immersion in the music, yeah. um, but also the um, the sound when when it comes to sound healing that that last bit it's really difficult to translate yeah. those frequencies through a tiny little speaker or yeah. that, or you know you yeah the the um, the technical difficulties of mm. getting those frequencies from the instrument through the internet into your front room. <laughs> <laughs> have been yeah a little bit difficult yeah but, um never say never uh yeah, yeah n anything could happen um, exactly yeah, and how can uh, how can people get hold of you and experience your chocolate um forever cacao.co.uk that's cacao c-a-c-a-o yeah. um yeah there's uh lots of stuff on there obviously i'm on all this, uh, well there's a there's a platform there's a forever cacao facebook instagram um but i recently i have been trying to stay off those yeah yeah <laughs> it just yeah. seems to be it just seems to be such a time zapper um yeah. it's nice to have a front end there but yeah. uh don't get stuck in a scroll hole that's yes. my best advice <laughs> <laughs> i love that <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. Why, wise advice <laughs> from coming from the cacao master that was channeled straight through i love it <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> brilliant and on that note then we'll end thank you so much for joining me and enjoy the rest of your hot chocolate and um, cheers i've finished mine <laughs> yeah i've got a little bit left <laughs> so if you've enjoyed watching uh what we talked about today please hit the like and subscribe and share with other people who you might think would be interested in hearing all about pablo's beautiful uh, forever cacao chocolate so thank you for watching and stay safe take care bye thanks lisa Right.